Hello everyone and welcome to Dice Sagas. I'm Christian, Matt isn't able to join us today. However, this will be a very brief introduction. So this is going to be a battle report between Akaradrin Overlords versus the Blades of Corn. So this is going to be the start of our brand new chapter, chapter 2. Chapter 1 you'll be able to find in the description down below. So I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone for the continued support and I hope you enjoy the video. The afternoon sun glints off the peak of the rusted mount near the town of Fertarum. The Dwarden populace works away diligently, mining ever deeper into the mountainside above and down into the coastal caves below. Rich in minerals, they had built fortifications to withstand any assault in this unpredictable sub-realm, a comforting sense of stability in an otherwise chaotic place. Though sturdy it may be, their regular wall patrols maintained an air of tenseness around the town. Today was particularly busy as they expected the arrival of Caradrin's sky vessel for trade. There would be valuable supplies as well as wealth of income to the local shops, especially the taverns. Admiral Kallik was well known for his ability as a leader, but also as a stout drinker. Thorod glowered across the plains beyond the walls. His hands held onto his drake gun, Grom Zar, with the experienced discipline of a war veteran. He had survived in the interstice for more years than he cared to count, and the experiences have left visible and invisible scars that he would never heal from. Though the last few years in Fair Tarm have softened his belly, his mind remains sharp and ever vigilant. Something's not right, he grumbles to his patrol partner, Bull Gromley. The other dwarf in Iron Drake looks up from his half nap, begrudgingly sitting up from his reclined position. He gives a heavy sigh as he cranes his neck to get a better view. The tower they stationed was the highest point of the town walls, giving them a perfect vantage point for a few miles in each direction. Oh, you stubborn grumbake! He complains to Thorod as he pulls his helm back over his eyes. You won't be satisfied until there's something knocking on our doors, will you? I wish you'd take the patrols a bit more seriously. Thorod replies with an indignant tone, his eyes still fixed on the horizon. We could be caught unawares and by what? Bulgromley snaps back, clearly unable to continue his nap. The last thing to attack the town was that giant Iron Cray, eight moons ago. And all it did was waste shot and make me sick of cray soup after the third week. The mention alone brought back an unpleasant taste in his throat, not unlike that of Blackhammer Stouts. Something else he avoids nowadays. We've earned this peace after surviving through this damned Azul Gazan. And these walls are a testament to that. He stamps his feet on the fine stonework below him. Thorod pays him no mind but his attention shifts from the vast plains ahead of him to a sound, a faint rumbling echoing off the rusting mountain peaks. You hear that? He asks his partner in a low hush. Bulgromley lifts his helmet off momentarily and takes a cursory listen. Oh, probably just the sound of the Endringuli coming around the mountain passes. Their flying vessels make a loud ruckus as they approach. He says as his hands reach unconsciously for his drake gun. He moves towards the edge of the tower to where Thorod stood, and glanced at the horizon the veteran watched with building consternation. Oh, rots. He says in a soft curse. Thorod runs towards the opposite edge of the tower facing the town, and blows into his horn. Two long blasts. Admiral Kallik Shadowhull breathes in deeply as his ship enters the airspace near the rusted coast. The smell of salt sea air and the corroding metals was quite a unique mix. Not overly pleasant, but it did remind him of the lovely ale that they served at the Dwarden trading town. Even in the harsh conditions of the interstice, Dwarden persistence allowed them to survive and thrive. While they never did see eye to eye with their grounded brethren, the Caradrin overlords always felt obliged to maintain good trade relations with them. One of the many benefits of this was the camaraderie and the drinking. 
No matter how advanced their technologies or empowered by Aethergold the Caradron became, few could develop ale quite as well as their land-anchored cousins. A cool night breeze blew through the cabin, and the stars twinkled above them like dancing flames. He had ordered his captain for a slow flight into the town, hoping to make it in just in time for the twilight tap service. What'll be your first drink order? He shouts to his engine master over the loud whirring of the ships. Spice mead. He replies, not really caring for conversation. Bah, you boring Grimbucky. Me? I'll be ordering red beer ale first, and then a few black hammer stouts to start. The Admiral reminisces. They taste fantastic. Smell like fire. The engine master interrupts, his head looking up from his work. No, no. It smells a bit like wet rat. But no, it smells like fire, the engine master says, adjusting his goggles as he peers out into the night sky. Far along the horizon, plumes of black smoke drift into the sky dimly lit below by the crimson red flames of roaring fires. Kalik jumps to his feet and rushes to the bridge of the ship, crew members already crowding at the guardrails. There is a hush murmur around them as they look on with an ominous dread. Sir! Where shall I set course? The captain asks from his station. We stay on course, Kallik Shadowhouse says with a deep sigh. To Federem. Kazgrim tears another piece of meat from the bone with his teeth. The tough meat is bitter compared to most, but it was expected from Duarden. He spits on the ground and licks his teeth clean. They were a lot hairier as well. Screams fill the air as more survivors are found and brought out into the open. Most of them are sick or too old to fight. Their warriors had long been exhausted, dying gloriously in battle against Kazgrim's reavers and warriors. Small and stout folk they were, they put up a good fight for some time, though short-lived it was. Their shield walls could not contain the violent urgency that was the Red Tide nor could they break the brass vanguard of blood warriors as they marched upon the town walls. Though they had built sturdy fortifications into the mountainside, it only made their escape impossible. The skull altar stood tall in its bloody, glistening glory. On either side, two huge funeral pyres blaze on, filling the air with acrid smoke and the smell of charring flesh. Xander, the skull keeper, stands at the top of the altar and watches as the tribe feasts on the prey and throw offerings into the burning pits. Kron Gortooth makes a display out of each survivor. The slaughter priest cuts off the proud beard off of the Dwarden and throws it into the pyre along with whatever else they valued, letting them watch while held aloft in his bloodied arms. He stayed silent as some wept, others cursed, and some just remained catatonically still before they too were killed. Beheaded, disemboweled, or torn apart in Kron's arms, their fate was, similarly, spectacularly bloody. With each one, a cheer runs up through the horde of cannibals. They cheered for their victory, they cheered for their feast, and they cheered for their blood god. Kazgrim leans on his axe and utters his own silent prayer. Since being trapped in the interstice, the slaughter priest has felt a disconnect from the blood god, and this concerned him greatly. When Kazgrim strode across the smoking waste of Akshi, he could feel Korn's gaze as Kazgrim spilled blood for his patron. Korn's demons could be summoned forth, screaming into reality from the chaos realm, and the slaughter was ever continuous. But in this strange pocket realm, he could barely call forth Korn's judgments to unleash upon his foes. He knows, though, that Korn's blessings are not given, but only earned, so he continued his great pilgrimage of gore, so that he can once more catch the glorious gaze of Korn to bear witness to the blood shed by Kazgrim blood spawn. A dull thud shakes him from his thoughts. The town burns brightly around him, illuminating the sky with flickering lights. His warband stretches through the town, letting them feast and hunt whenever they pleased, but something was amiss. Another dull thud reverberates the ground, 
and suddenly the entire warband stops and looks up, unsure of what was happening. Screams echo from beyond some ruined buildings as louder noises approach. An explosion sends rubble flying through the air, caving in the skull of one unfortunate blood reaver. The entire horde gets onto their feet in preparations, knives and axes at the ready to receive whatever counterattack approaches. Great engines roar above as the Admiral's frigate comes closer to the burning settlement. With a quick signal flare, several Arcanaut companies disembark and rappel down on ropes to ground level, rushing into cover with guns at the ready. A quick turning maneuver brings the Admiral closer to the Skull Altar as he eyes the horde of marauding killers. Zamdun Ongi, he mutters with distaste. You sample 375-S. The one from the Thragogi camp. The Aether chemist on board seems a bit hesitant upon hearing his orders. Are you sure, sir? He asked timidly behind his respirator mask. That's a very rare and unique specimen. I don't know if we'll... You have your orders. Kallik shouts back, intolerant of the insubordination. The Aether chemist begrudgingly obeys as he retrieves the sample. A large, specially forged flask, brimming with green power. He carefully loads it onto one of his contraptions, specially constructed for this purpose. As the ship circles back and approaches the skull altar, the Aether Chemist takes aim with his nozzle and launches the specimen out. The flask flies through the air, spinning as a second shot comes ripping out through the machine to smash the flask apart, letting loose the contained power. The sky erupts into flashes of yellow and green bolts of warp fire lightning that pierces the night. They strike the blood secretor, standing high on the edifice of corn, sending a painful shock coursing through his body. He screams in anguish as he begins seizing before collapsing to the ground unconscious, his great skull banner clattering down the steps of the altar. All around his burnt body, blood warriors and reavers are blasted by the same chaotic tendrils of warp fire lightning. Bodies are scorched, and those not able to withstand the chaotic forces are left dead or dying in a convulsing pile on the ground. The Korgoraths roar as the warp lightning incinerates one of them, turning their bone-laden bodies into disintegrating ash. Bombarding shells send pieces of shrapnel ripping through the air, taking chunks of flesh from any nearby. From the deck of the Arcanaut frigate, plumes of dark powder smoke gives way to showers of lead as the Wrathmongers take the brunt of the attack. They charge headlong at the enemy, but are slowly brought down by an overwhelming amount of shot. Kazgrim shouts out at his men scattering around him. A stroke of warp lightning sweeps around him, searing his flesh. The use of magic was as displeasing to him as it was to his blood god. He yelled at the enemy, decimating his forces from the safety of the sky. They wouldn't even close for combat. Such was their craven nature. He despised this kind of enemy the most. The sky was abuzz with noise as aircraft swooped close overhead, dropping explosive ordinances onto the unsuspecting corn followers. One daring gun hauler dives toward the skull grinder, sending the warrior and his chained anvil flying through the building as it crumbles on top of him. Through the haze of smoke and fire, shadows drift down from above to land onto the cobbled streets of the former Dwarden settlement. Arcanaut companies parachute down as they let loose wild shots at the surprised Corn army. With the twitching mass of bodies below, it was like shooting Skaven in a hole. The descending privateers laugh and shout as they make landfall and begin marching onto the site of the massacre, guns blazing. Kazgrim directs his forces to meet with those that dared enter into the melee, while he focuses his attention on the wild storm around him. From a gaping wound in his chest, he smears his hand with his own blood as he throws them up into the air and chants a prayer for corn. The blood on his hands sear his flesh as they burn with the effort of snuffing out the magical lightning that continues to wildly decimate his men. The twisting chaotic energies finally diffuse as his trembling hands are charred down to the bone. With the task complete, he hoisted his axe in his hands 
ignoring the biting pain in his palms. There was blood to be shed. Kron stands by the altar of skulls, the tang of lightning still lingering in the air. He roars at the ship flying above as it circles around for another strafing attack. Open wounds on his body oozes with blood, and he uses it as he prepares a chant. Gesturing with his bloodied hands and the eldritch prayers rolling from his bloodied tongue, tendrils of blood surge towards the flying frigate. Aboard the craft, several of the crewmen are struck by the bloody tendrils, causing them to retch up their own innards as their blood boils within them. They collapse, sending the craft tilting in its flight as the captain tries to maintain a steady altitude above the combat zone. On the ground, Kron spots the marching formations of the Arcanaut Company, firing steadily as they approach. Cursing their cowardly attack, he raises his fist in the air, calling for a blessing of corn to smite them and their spineless tactics. To answer his prayer, a giant icon of corn comes crashing down from the sky, pulverizing several of the Duarden as well as clipping the wings of one of the gun haulers. Dragging along the ground, it catches several more of them under its crushing assault. Despite the barrage of fire and lead, the Blood Reavers come out swinging, leaping over rubble and wall as they throw every doubt to the wind. Bodies drop by the dozen as they make futile advances under the unforgiving torrent of bullets. The brass vanguard of Blood Warriors fare better as their armor can stop or deflect some of the smaller caliber of pistols, but under the sheer volume, they too come to a bloody halt. The few that manage to make a charge into the enemies are brought down by attrition and Arcanaut cutlasses. The Duarden hoot and shout victoriously as the dead pile high. Kazgrim, using the bodies of his followers as shields, weaves into combat and sends a soul-rending cleave through several of the Duarden land troops. Their jeers and shouting turn into terrifying screams as the gigantic mountain of muscle begins to tear through them and they are soon forced to retreat from the sight of their dismembered bodies of their fallen. Elsewhere, Korgraths also throw themselves onto a group of privateers as their bodies absorb all manner of missiles. Bone tentacles and claws rip and tear through the ranks as the Dwarden ground crew are reduced to fleshy red ribbons. Masses of corpses litter the streets as the Caradrin gunships make deadly passes overhead. Both Kron and Kazgrim cry out into the night, calling for a reckoning against their cowardly foes. Chittering screeches are heard amongst the pile of dead as the skull altar begins to overflow with the blood of the fallen. It spills over to drench the ground in blood and gore, pulsing life into the lifeless forms. Muscles and sinews stretch and tear as horn and fang protrude from the bodies of the fallen. Blood letters are birthed into this world as if torn from the bloody womb of the dead. Dripping with ichor, they cackle as they make leaping bounds towards the enemy. The Korgraths, sensing Korn's presence in the air, go into a frenzy as they scale a low wall to leap upon a low-flying gun hauler, ripping the wing and engine from it as if a leaf from a tree. The ship crashes spectacularly in a ball of fire and flames. Kazgrim laughs at the turn of events, feeling renewed by the demonic presence of Korn on the battlefield. Truly, the blood spilled here has finally caught the attention of his vengeful god. But before he could turn to begin a new assault upon the Dwarden, an exploding shell catches him unaware, throwing him against a broken wall and impaling him upon a sharpened spike. He sputters and coughs up blood as he curses the enemy above. Kron calls out to the scattered remains of their forces, trying to rally them into a cohesive fighting group, but his shouts only attract the attention of a group of engine riggers, flying down to engage the enemy with whirring saws and drills. Kron, weakened from the warp lightning storm, swings his wrath hammer wildly at the foe, but the rending mechanical blades tear through his flesh, sending him slumping against the looming skull altar. The flying Dwarden look to dive in for the kill, but a set of flares from the frigate illuminate the sky calling for their retreat. Just as well, 
the rapidly approaching bloodletters, was reason enough to withdraw. They eye the battlefield as they fly back to their ship. The settlement was in ruins and on fire, bodies littering every inch. Talemba! Kallik shouts to his signal master aboard the ship. We've done enough damage here, and the enemies have been scattered. He had watched the battle closely through his spyglass as the enemy was overwhelmed by their blitz. With the leaders disposed of, he knew the chaotic masses of corn would simply disperse over time. There was no need to expend further munitions. Captain, task a crew and bring us around by dawnbreak. The Admiral orders as he runs his fingers along his beard. Sir, we'll send a crew in the morning after the enemy have vacated Vedaram. We'll salvage what we can from the town. Hopefully, it won't make this entire trip a loss. He says between grinding teeth. I really need a drink now. The ruins of the burnt town smoldered in the evening chill. The Korgraths continued to gorge on the skulls of the fallen, as the bloodletters milled about aimlessly, as if in waiting. The corn warriors piled by the dozen, their blood soaking into the ground until saturated into a slurry of bloody mud. The altar of skulls begins to recede and sink back into the fetid ground, shaking the earth around it as the call of corn gradually disappears. A heartbeat echoes through the air, palpable by the diminutive demons of corn. Even the Korgraths take notice enough to stop their feasting. Blood draws up from the surrounding and slowly oozes together to seek their new keeper. His heart pulses sending a reverberation through reality as the blood seeping into his body gives it renewed vigor. Kazgrim Bloodspawn brings his feet to the ground once more, pushing his impaled form upwards as the blood knits his wound together and envelops him in a bath of sanguine rejuvenation. He roars with pain at his new awakening, spawning from the blood of his fallen allies and enemies alike. A flood of thoughts overwhelms his mind briefly, as the blood memories flash through his mind's eye, sending him into a fit of maddening, <laughs> maniacal laughter. <laughs> Kalik Shadowhull, he whispers with a bloodstained sardonic smile. He channels the blood around him, directing its flow towards the broken bodies of his fallen comrades. Some of the warriors begin to seize and jerk as their bodies are engorged by the blood offering from Kazgrim, breathing life back into their broken forms. There would be no rest for them here. Despite the heavy losses they've received, the blood must always flow. Thank you for viewing our video. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon too to be notified of future content. We've also got links to Facebook and Instagram in the links below. We've also started a Patreon. It's by no means an obligation. However, if you'd like to support the channel, please obviously check that out. It's down below in the description too. I'd like to thank you again for viewing our content. Take care and let the dice tell the story.